over when that alarm clock rang off at 4.30 a.m. every morning. And I saw the time that she went to sleep the night before and that now she's waking up at 4.30 to catch a couple buses to go to work in the county. She knew the importance of that job and she knew the importance of hard work and that stemmed to us. Because that's how she put food on the table. That's how she was our breadwinner. And through that, and through seeing that fight, and through seeing that struggle, and through seeing her on a daily basis grinded out the sacrifice for me, what else could I do but not live out my dreams? Right. Just as a child, I was surrounded by women. And I told you, I'm still surrounded by women today. We got a three bedroom house and, and three women, so I'm a little better off now. But I got three bosses. And God has blessed us, we're truly blessed. But I'll never forget when I brought my mother and Marilyn to Reservoir Hill. I'll never forget driving down North Avenue, turning on park, making a left, left on Lennox and saying, this is where I want to live, baby. And my mother and Marilyn looked at the open drug market on the streets. They looked at the trash all up in the alley, dumped everywhere. They looked at the abandoned properties that I was pointing to saying I wanted to live in, and they said, Nick, you absolutely crazy. What's wrong with you? My mother said, boy, you went to school to be an electrical engineer. Your wife is going to be and an attorney soon. Sorry about that. <laughs> Your wife is going to be an attorney soon. Y'all can live anywhere you want to live in Baltimore. Why are you choosing to live here? But I saw the potential of this community. That's right. I knew that Drew Hill Park was our backyard. Yeah. I knew we had the largest metro stop a couple blocks away. I knew we had the light rail right here, Micah right here. I knew our proximity to Penn Station and to downtown meant that this community should be more than a transformative community. This community should be a healthy neighborhood. And me and Marilyn, we didn't listen to our friends. We didn't listen to our families. We put that stake in the ground and we live there today. And I'll never forget. I'll never forget the properties across the street and the condition that they were in. I never forget the property on the corner and the condition it was in. Mm -hmm. It was fireball. The whole side wall was blown out. I'll never forget the complex that we're staying in today was affectionately known in this community and around Baltimore as Murder Mall. Yeah. See, the children in this community, I'll never forget sitting on the roof with Maryland while our house was under the construction. And we looked out and we saw children playing the game. And one child would run up to another child and another child would say, 5050, they come. And then the children would scramble around and get them and, and act as if they was arresting them. See, in, in most communities in Baltimore, they play cops and robbers. But in this community, where we decide to put our stake at, they play drug dealers and police officers because that's what they saw. And I know to most folks, what they saw in this community was a community that was beat down, a community that was forgotten. They saw my house as a house that was beat down, a house that was forgotten. But me and Marilyn, we connected and we said, we're gonna fight. And we're gonna fight for this community. Right. We moved in any way, and we wanted to be part of the rejuvenation of West Baltimore. Marilyn and I spent countless hours at community meetings, writing letters, writing emails, demanding more from our government for our neighborhood. And I also remember back in last April, when we saw the unrest. There was a point in me, it was in the middle of my council district, that as cars were on fire, buildings were on fire, walking down the street on North Avenue, holding hand in hand with clergy, business owners, and folks from the community, saying enough is enough, telling the young boys to go home, trying to be priests and peace to the streets at that time. That was a scary moment, but it was a defining moment. Busy because it showed that at the end of the day, no matter how far we'll be done as a community, we can build back up. Yes, we, can. we can build back up. Yes. And the images that folks want to play all across this country and all across the world, 
as a depiction of Baltimore wasn't. See, what they wanted to do was validate what folks learned about Baltimore through the wire, through now this lens of a couple hours of unrest, amen? amen. But I know that my city is much more than that. Yeah. Right. I know that my city is much more worth fighting for than that. I know that that does not define who we are or what we are or exactly where we're going. Right. Friends, today I have a question for you. I have a question for each and every one of you. From Ms. Donna Landers, to Ben, to Mr. Smith, to Rob Levine, folks who have been in and out of my life from day one. I have a question, and that question is, are you willing to fight for a better Baltimore? Yeah. 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 I don't know if I'm talking in a different language or y'all didn't hear me. But Pastor E, I said, are you willing to fight for a better Baltimore? Yeah. ourselves, are we willing to fight for a better Baltimore? Are we willing to fight yeah. against poverty, yeah. against illiteracy? Yeah. Are we ready to fight to provide a world-class education for yeah. every single child in the city? Yeah. Are we willing to fight? Yeah. See, because what I know is, individually, I'm going to continue to fight. But collectively, collectively, just with the folks we have here today, yeah. uh -huh. the 300 folks we have standing in front of me today, yeah. I know that if we if decide we... to collectively fight, yeah. that the better Baltimore that we want will come to reality. Amen? Amen. Are you willing to fight? Yeah. Are you willing to fight? Yeah. Today, I ask you to stand with me I am announcing my candidacy to run for the mayor of Baltimore City. right behind me. If you're sprinting, if you're walking, if you're in a wheelchair, if you stay at home, I need all of your mind power, all of your might, all of your blood, sweat, and tears to do this. Because today we're running about something called new energy. We're running about something called new ideas for our city. We're talking about an unvaluable commitment to ensuring that we provide opportunity for every single citizen in the city of Baltimore, amen. See, it's amazing because when I think back 50 years, I think back to 1964 when people were fighting for civil rights. I think back to 1965 when people were fighting for voting rights. Yeah. Right. I think back to 1968, yeah. when people were fighting for housing rights. Yeah. Uh -huh. But when you look at some of our communities today, how far have we moved the ball forward? Yeah. Have our grandparents' dream gone in vain? So today, before you, I ask, in the next 50 years, when our Baltimore City kids, in that highly proficient elementary, middle, or high school looks into their history book, they'll know that these 300 collectively came together yeah. to forever change the trajectory yeah. of Baltimore City. Yeah. That's what I'm here for. Yeah. Yeah. See, growing up, my mother and my grandmother taught me to demand more for myself and more for my family. That's why they always exercise their rights to vote. That's why they were always part of their community. But with that grew a spirit inside of me. And that's the fight for our citizens, to fight for Baltimore. And that's what I ask of you today. Starting today, even starting with me, we must demand more from our government. Yeah. Yeah. Right. 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 
And in my administration, I promise you, I'm going to push and fight and scratch and successfully lead to better schools for our children. I'm going to push, fight, and scratch and successfully change this course of homelessness in the city of Baltimore. I'm going to successfully fight and scratch to ensure that we feel safe walking around our community. And I promise you this, I will successfully fight and scratch and push for a more transparent, more accountable, and open government. Yeah. On day one, we'll demand that our police officers wear body cameras. All right. yes. All right. And we're not going to get caught up in the talk. Body cameras are good for the police, but they're also good for the citizens. It provides the police an opportunity to truly explain what took place. And it provides the citizens transparency on every single stop. We will demand that we streamline the process and go after these vacant buildings. I'm disgusted driving through my own district, seeing some of the blight and the decline that we've seen over several decades. When is enough enough? We will continue to fight for more funding for our school specifically around childhood education. Yes. We know the sooner you get to a child, the better they'll be off educationally. Yes. We know that our children who are proficient in reading at the third grade level when they're in third grade have amazing statistics of graduating from high school. We know that. We will demand better for the citizens for this great city. And I am the one to continue to push that. Yeah, yeah. See, and I'm the one because I share a unique story. Yeah. Not so unique from you out there, but a unique story for me standing right here. See, my story is Baltimore's story. I've seen the best. I've seen the worst. To the young man out there that seems invisible, I see him. Yeah. To the young woman who feels voiceless, I hear you. It's about connecting the dots. I've had an amazing time in corporate America. And I tell folks this all the time. I can go into any boardroom downtown, see an issue, develop a plan, and execute on it. But you can drop Nick Mosby in any street corner from east to west Baltimore, and I can do the same exact thing. that we need in Baltimore City. To the single mother who's clenching your cell phone, worried about if your child is home safe from school yet. I know your pain because you are my mother. To the young boy who has these dreams in his head but knows at the end of the day the education that he's receiving isn't good enough to achieve those dreams.